Welcome back to the fourth episode of How to Retire. Uh, today, we are gonna be talking about the math behind your retirement paycheck. And I am Scott Newhouse. I'm very excited to kind of take you through how are we gonna go from making a normal, regular paycheck at our job to creating a retirement paycheck on your own terms with the assets and the investments that you've accumulated over the last two to three decades. Before we get into all of those details, let's start off with our quote for the episode, which is retirement. No job, no stress, no pay. Now we want the first two. We don't want a job, we don't want stress, but we do want you to have enough money, enough of a paycheck that you create uh, where you're not stressed out and you can enjoy retirement doing whatever you want. So the first thing that I wanna say in terms of creating your retirement paycheck is we wanna keep this simple. We do not need uh, to do you know any complicated math. We don't need calculus. We don't even need, honestly, like algebra. We just need, we just need ba basic math that we learned in elementary school uh, to put together um, how we're gonna create a paycheck for, for you and your family in retirement. So let's start off with an example of what um, I like to do uh, when we're getting started, you know, kind of running these numbers and seeing if our retirement projections are going to make sense or not. The first, and so I'm going to add up a number of different sources that you could potentially have income from in retirement. Some of these will apply to you, some won't, okay? So just want to put that out there. The first potential source of income is part-time earned income. I know some of you might be saying, Scott, I thought this was retirement. There's no job. I'm not going to have to work anywhere. Um, and, and if the numbers make sense for you not to have any type of earned income, that's great. You don't have to. I actually know people who are doing completely fine on social security plus their, their investment distributions, but they are choosing to do some kind of part-time work, you know, 10 hours, 15 hours a week, so that they have something meaningful, something to uh, stimulate their brains, something that they really enjoy. And so if that describes you, great. And if the numbers make sense where you don't need this at all, that's awesome too. Just putting it out there that some people do it and some people actually enjoy it. So that's our first type of income that we could potentially have. Uh, what we're going to do there is we're going to take that earned income and then we're going to add social security. What are you going to get from social security? Which again, we're going to talk about in a separate video uh, on you know, what do we need to think about in terms of social security? Then we'll add in whatever you get from a pension. If anything, we're going to add in um, what you're going to get from any rental properties, royalties, alimony, or inheritance that you have, as well as adding your distributions from your investment accounts. Um, so we're going to add up all of those sources. Then what we're going to need to do is we're going to subtract um, what your annual income need is, i.e. your expenses, which we talked about in a previous video, one of the most important things that you need to do before you retire, figure out how much you want to spend on that monthly basis. So we add up all those income sources. Uh, we see what your total rough estimated income is. Then we subtract expenses and then we're going to subtract taxes as well. Um, and taxes are getting a little bit tricky when we're talking about federal and state. Um, but, uh, you know, we've got some ideas on taxes that we will be discussing in a later video. Then from there, we, you know, we add up all the income, we subtract all of the expenses. Then if we have a surplus, hooray, that's great news. We're on a good track. And then if there's a deficit, uh, i.e., our expenses are greater than what our income sources are, then we need to make some tweaks. I don't think we should panic. I, I really never think um, it's a good time to panic because that really doesn't serve you at all. But there are some tweaks that we're going to have to make if you have... Um, if your expenses are, are, are higher or even significantly higher than your income. We definitely have to make tweaks there. And that's something that we need to address right away um, before we get into retirement. We don't wanna figure that out our first year in retirement that we're spending uh, more than we can justify. So let's do an example here um, and see this math in action. So part-time earned income, I'm going to put that at $0 and just assuming we don't have that. And then we're going to add to that uh, our social security. And I am assuming here that we have a, a, a married couple. Um, in 2023, the average social security check um, is $1,782. So I'm simply multiplying that by two. So average social security check multiplied by two, and then I'm, I'm um, multiplying that by 12 for 12 months. And the annual social security income is 42,768. Your social security check will absolutely vary from the average. So you definitely got to look at your statement and we'll be talking about social security soon in a separate video. 
I'm going to add in a pension of 500 a month or 6,000 a year, um, because as I might have said before, I actually have a decent number of clients who still do uh, receive a pension. So we'll put that in there. We're going to assume that you have nothing from rental property, royalties, alimony, or an inheritance. And now um, we also need to add your distributions from your investment accounts. Now, this is a rough um, just guess, and I am not recommending anyone follow this strategy because you absolutely have to drill down more into the strategies and the distributions, uh, withdrawal strategies. But I'm assuming, let's say you have uh, $300,000 in investments. You take out a 5% distribution. That is 15,000 a year. So I'm adding that to, um, our income total. If I had in social security, plus the pension, plus the 15,000 from investment distributions, you see on your screen there, the total, um, that we're going to have in terms of income is 63,768. Now what we need to do is we need to subtract um, your expenses. And let's just say that this hypothetical couple wants to spend 5,000 a month, that's 60,000 a year. And, and obviously we still have a surplus at this point. Now what's really interesting about this is that if you look at the tax code, there's a lot of uh, really cool things going on for this uh, couple in terms of their taxes because social security gets taxed based on what your provisional income is. And I've made separate videos on this in my uh, course on the retirement tax bomb. So you definitely go pick up that book and go through that course if you want to learn more about provisional income for social security. But based on that, based on the standard deduction that people over the age of 65 get, um, this person owes next to nothing in terms of federal income tax in retirement. Um, and so that's actually uh, a really, that, that's a really amazing thing for this hypothetical couple. And so when we look at the math combined, we see that there's $3,768 of a surplus, i.e. they have $3,768 more of income than what their actual expenses will be in retirement. Now, that's not going to apply to, to everyone. Not everyone's going to have a surplus. And so let's talk about what you need to do if you have a deficit, i.e. if your spending is higher than what you anticipate your income to be. The first is obviously work longer. And I'm not talking five to 10 years, but what if you work a year or two more? Um, what if instead of retiring full-time, you work part-time uh, for a couple of years when you were planning to retire uh, completely? Another option uh, obviously is to save more, ramp up your savings in the few years that you have before you want to retire. You can also, and this is probably going to be uh, this is going to generate a lot of bank for your buck. Figure out how to spend less. Even going from spending fifty five hundred a month to five thousand a month, that makes a big difference in terms of how long your retirement income is going to be able uh, to last for you. And then the last uh, idea I have is. If you have a deficit, what if we get a very part-time job in retirement? What if we make $1,000 a month, $12,000 a year, um, instead of you doing any of the first three things? Um, if you make $12,000 a year in retirement, that roughly replicates the distribution amount you could get if you had an extra $240,000 in investments. So I hope that makes sense. If you have uh, just a simple 12,000 extra a month of income that could basically, uh, replicate and recreate, um, some additional assets that you don't have. Um, so, and the last thing that I want to say in terms of having a deficit is what if you combined all four of these options? What if you worked a year longer, saved uh, a couple thousand dollars more per year, uh, cut your spending by 500 to a thousand dollars a month in retirement and what if you worked a, a part-time job for a couple of years uh, just to make it easier on yourself all of those aspects combined can really make a big difference in terms of making sure that you're going to have enough income that's going to last the rest of your life so if you have a deficit don't don't panic, but it is time to get to work and figure out which one, if, if not all of these strategies, do you need to employ so that the numbers do make sense that you really don't have to stress out too much about having to go back to work full time once you get into retirement. So our recap for this episode, the math on your retirement paycheck one, you do not need to overcomplicate this. This is really basic math that we've got to drill down first. The second thing that we need to remember is that you've got to know your expenses first because that's going to be the biggest nut that we have to crack. You also have to determine all of your sources of income in retirement from various aspects, from various places that it's coming from. 
Also, if you have a deficit, if your expenses and taxes are greater than your income, the sooner you make tweaks to it, the better off you are going to be. And so that's all we've got for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.